Jaden gave him an octazord, gave him an octazord. One of them, there were five. Uh, I remember their names too. There was Reggie, um, um, Fred, uh, uh, Temeculus. <coughs> That's actually the fourth one's name. And um, Bob. First blooper. <laughs>《Hello There Heroes, I'm the Orange Ranger, and welcome to another Saban Brands Top 10 Off-Season Video. Over the past eight years, four teams of Power Rangers have defended the Earth from the forces of evil. Two of those teams ended up with six members, one of those teams ended up with seven members, but only six at any one time, and the last team went all out and gave us ten. And just to be clear, I mean the last team I was referring to, not the last team of the era, because Ninja Steel didn't have 10 Rangers, which is a good thing because they'd be even less well characterized. But moving on, some of them were good, most of them were not, sadly, but we're going to keep it positive this time. To the victors go the spoils, and to the heroes go the rankings. Okay, I guess that makes sense. So here's a look at my top 10 Saban Brands era Power Rangers. The only disclaimer to really throw in this time is one I've kind of already said. Yes, I do consider Robo Knight a Power Ranger. Number 10. Nobody. Ninja Steel and Super Ninja Steel. Nobody, 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 nobody. First things first, I have to give an honorable mention to Xeno Wing from Dino Supercharge, who had made this list at number 10. But I started out making this list the same way I've been doing the others, picking a representative from each season and then adding two. Now, not all of the Super Seasons added Rangers, so I just have to pick a second Ranger representative to fill in for that gap. But then I got to Ninja Steel and Super Ninja Steel, and I just couldn't pick a favorite. That is not the praise that it sounds like. I could not justify adding any of these rangers to a top 10 rangers list at any position, even number 10. The Ninja Steel Rangers were such flat lists of attributes, such dull, uninteresting representations of people that none of them deserves any particular praise over the others. But I felt that that fact in itself did warrant mentioning. So if you want to think that they all just tied and I just picked them all at the number 10 spot, you know what? You go right on ahead and think that. That's actually kind of the point. None of them stand out from anything. Number nine, Jaden, Samurai, Super Samurai. During Super Mega Force, when Jaden visits those rangers at the Froyo place, he orders plain. Besides wondering what plain frozen yogurt is, is it vanilla? Plain yogurt? What is plain yogurt? It's how many people remember him. Plain. Ordinary. Jaden makes the list because he's the character that drives Samurai's story the most and has some drama and nuance about him. The fake leader, the one that had to stand in the gap and draw attention away from the true hero, his sister Lauren. He had to carry the lie and act confidently about it, acting like he was the true leader. Number 8. Noah. Megaforce, Super Megaforce. Gotta have some love for the geeks and the nerds, and I just got a really weird sense of deja vu. Noah's not actually much deeper of a character than we got on Ninja Steel, though he does get some odd sort of characterization that kind of goes against the grain of his character, with the whole focusing on sword fighting and kind of being a white knight during Super Mega Force. Noah would get really excited about Ranger history during Super Mega Force, and he developed an odd tendency to take on villains by himself. He grew awkwardly, which I guess is sort of fitting for a geeky nerd. Number 7. Robo Knight, Megaforce. Hello again, old friend. 
the only entity that could make both the Zord and Ranger list, Robo Knight is really the only character on Megaforce who has any sort of a character arc. He starts out as a robotic defender of the Earth and its environment, so focused on that that he'd just as soon attack the Rangers to get them out of the way. Humans did not matter. Only protecting the Earth and its environment did. But over time he mellowed as the Rangers gained his trust, and his character arc comes to a close with him sacrificing himself to save humanity, the other Rangers in particular, his true friends. Much like Vrock and all the rest of that Megaforce stuff, there's a little bit for Robo Knight tacked on during Super Megaforce, turned evil by Vrock but being freed from that and sacrificing himself a second time to save Orion, whom he'd never even met. I do think it very nicely ties the two six Rangers of Megaforce together. Number six, Orion, Super Megaforce. Hey, speaking of... Robo Knight is a character with a great arc, but very little backstory. Orion is the exact opposite of that. Orion has a rich backstory. An ore miner whose world was conquered by the Armada, his village destroyed, his family presumably killed, but he found the Silver Ranger key and his means for revenge. But Orion has no arc, no development. Anytime I think of Orion, I always remember how, in his introduction episode, we learn about his deep and tragic backstory, and then almost immediately we see him dragged to the mall for a shopping montage, and the very next episode we get a risky business dance sequence from him in the halls of the school. Now and then they try to bring the tragic backstory back up to convince us that Orion had a depth that he actually didn't. But the backstory was strong, and he was a really capable and creative sixth ranger. Number five, Antonio, Samurai, Super Samurai. The second Samurai Ranger to show up on this list is as good as gold. Antonio has a very interesting personality that, go with me here, I think points at some minor underlying mental issues, and that's sort of an under theme of Samurai as a whole, actually. He shows up incredibly excited to help out the other Samurai Rangers, but is insistent on dictating exactly how that moment goes, how his debut is handled. But then Mentor G decides that he can't be a Ranger without proper Samurai training, takes away his Morpher because G was a jackass, and Antonio nearly becomes violent at the sudden change to his plans. Later, Antonio develops nothing less than post-traumatic stress disorder after having his spirit trapped in the body of a fish that was almost eaten by a cat. This renders him completely unable to fight, as both his morpher and especially his sword remind him of fish. G once again steps in, handling it well at first, but then really terribly. At first, he accepts Antonio's decision to resign as a Samurai Ranger, but insists that he still be useful, helping to repair and activate the Light Zord so the other Rangers can use it. But then he does exactly what you shouldn't do when you have someone with a phobia of something that's traumatized, just shoving a piece of fish into his mouth and telling him to get over it. As a ranger, Antonio was flash and personality personified, and I really like that he did it all himself. Jaden gave him the Octazord as a goodbye gift when the two of them were children, and Antonio not only figured out how his Zord worked, but its connection to the morphing grid and reverse engineered himself a morpher. A self-made ranger? That's golden. Number four, Tyler, Dino Charge, Dino Supercharge. I guess this list just got wild, huh? I don't really have much to say about Tyler, but I do like him, obviously, to have him ranked this high. Tyler is the perfect balance between excitable energy and calm maturity. He never loses his freaking mind, but he's not overly stoic either. Tyler is the classic case of the Red Ranger with the missing dad, but at least he gets him back early enough to have some interesting episodes with him before he gets that classic Ranger dad wanderlust. Number three, Emily, Samurai, Super Samurai. Samurai surprised? 
Probably so, Emily is the meekest of the Samurai Rangers, but that's why I like her. Emily almost certainly has clinical depression. She thinks terrible things about herself and had a fantastical burden placed on her by her sister who has probably cancer. But Emily always has a smile and a kind word and she gets herself up and gets into the fight. And to find something about Emily as a ranger to praise, do you remember her weapon? The Earth Slicer is one of my favorite Power Rangers individual weapons. It's so unique for Power Rangers, you don't see very much like it. It's called a Fuma Shuriken, and it's basically a gigantic bladed throwing star. It's awesome. The final two threatens to crack the Orange Ranger reality once again, as once again we have something from Super Mega Force going up against a ranger from Dino Charge that I am known to love. Can Super Mega Force actually land the number one spot two weeks out of three? Number two, Kendall, Dino Charge, Dino Supercharge. Kendall is beautiful and intelligent, an amazing match. I love how long Kendall plays the mentor role before she's made the Purple Ranger. It let us get to know her as a mentor and what she was like in that role and see the small hints of her desire to be a ranger before it actually happens. I mean, heck, someone else became the ranger that she was destined to be, and then she tries to help the team find another candidate for the Purple Energem before it makes it clear that she's the one it's looking for. Number one, Gia, Gia Mega Force, Super Mega Force. Oh man, heroes, check the foundations of your houses and find the nearest door frame. Super Mega Force tops the list for a second time. But there is nobody in this specific group of characters in the last eight years more deserving of the number one spot than Gia. Gia is that girl that could absolutely be a supermodel if she really wanted to. But she's not doing that right now because she's too busy succeeding at two or three other things. Gia kicks so much butt as a character that she didn't get a focus episode over two entire seasons of her show and hardly anyone realizes that because she just dominated the screen so much anytime she was on it. You figure that she must have had a focus episode somewhere in there if you remember her this strongly. As a ranger, the thing that stands out most to me about Gia is during Super Mega Force and her weapon ability. Weapon ability. It's not really touched on, but the Super Mega Sabers had this kind of merging ability, and Gia could merge two of the Super Mega Sabers together and form a double-bladed staff weapon. More often than not, though, she'd often just pull chains out of the bottom of them and fling them around as sword whips. Sword whips. Like Kratos. Who's beating that? Who? Number one. Opinions are like skin. Pretty much everybody has at least some, and it should usually be well defended. Here's a look at the viewer's choice. There's pretty solid agreement that Dino Charge was the best of the Saban brand's era, and this viewer's choice was one of the clearest signs of that. Third place is a tie between Super Samurai's female Red Ranger, Lauren, a very deserving choice that I only didn't pick because she wasn't around very long, and Megaforce's Robo Knight, three votes each. But after that, it was all Dino Charge. Six Dino Charge Rangers received at least one vote, including each of the core five. Tied for second was the romantic pairing of Dino Charge, Red Ranger Tyler and Pink Ranger Shelby, four votes each. But the clear winner was the blast from the past, that kick-butt caveman, the Sudarso Senior, Blue Ranger Coda, with eight votes. This week's YouTube shout-out goes to Jake the Gamer, who has an active channel focused on horticulture. Okay, kidding, it's a gaming channel, so go take a look. Well, believe it or not, heroes, next week is going to kind of wrap all this up. There is a seventh week scheduled, but it's dedicated to Beast Morphers, the first season of the Hasbro era, so this is kind of the end of the line. And actually, seasons are what I'm going to be talking about. It is time to rank up the most important, debated aspect of a Ranger era, the seasons themselves. 
Next week, I'll be telling you my top eight Saban Brands Power Rangers seasons. In the comments below, let me know what your favorite season is from the group of Samurai, Super Samurai, Megaforce, Super Megaforce, Dino Charge, Dino Supercharge, Ninja Steel, and Ninja Super Steel. Probably not one of those last two, but hey, you never know, so get to voting. That's going to do it for another Saban Brands Top 10 Off-Season video. Thank you, Hero, so much as always for watching. Make sure you hit that thumbs up button right down below to let me know that you enjoyed this video. While you're down there, head over to the comments and let me know what you thought of my list, how I rank things up, and also leave your vote for your favorite Saban Brands Power Rangers season. Make sure you subscribe to the channel to see all of my videos and ring the bell. Get your notifications set up so you're notified of whenever I post brand new videos like these Saban Brands Top 10 Off-Season videos. And if you want to lend any financial support to my channel, there are two ways you can do so. ko-fi.com slash orangerangervideos or digitaltipjar.com slash orangerangervid. Until next time, heroes, may the power protect you. Over the past eight years, four teams of Power Rangers have defended the Earth. Two of those teams... Over the past eight years, four... So it should be eight years, shouldn't it? Although that's weird. Hello there here, uh, maybe I should do like eight. Two of those teams ended up with six members. One of those teams had seven members, but only six is the phone. Two of those teams ended up with six. And his arc ends with himself, with himself turned evil by Brock, but then being freed from that and saving him, how everything unfolds in that and what he does and when, yeah. I guess this list just got wild, huh? Tyler is something, Tyler is the perfect balance between stoicism and ex Emily, em Emily, wow. She had a an enormous bur <laughs> from the group of samurai, super samurai, Dino Charge, Dino Super Charge, Mega Force, whoops. That's gonna do it for another Power Rangers dibble 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 dibble.